Hi everyone, welcome back to Keeping Up with the Chaldeans. We're here with uh, Junior Bidnew, my co-host, uh, Jeff Kassab, who is a theologian. Mm -hmm. Catholic uh, theologian. Catholic theologian, and he's uh, working towards uh, his master's to be a professor. Hopefully, God Hopefully. willing. Yeah. God willing, all yeah. right, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, so, um, Jeff, tell us a little bit about yourself and how we got here yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. First of all, I, I thank you for having me on. It's, sure. it's a pleasure to be on with you guys. I've awesome heard so many good things and thank you. so many great videos out there, man. You know, thank I've you. been watching them a lot lately. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I, uh, I do a lot of work for the church, a lot of work for ECRC, and uh, which is our Eastern Catholic Re-Evangelization Center. Um, uh, we do a lot of retreats and a lot of Bible studies and a lot of great things come out of that place um, for our and it's for our diocese. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as me, um, I've been a Catholic all my life, but um, you know, a little quick story. In, in 2010, I got diagnosed with colon cancer, mm. and um, you know, went through some all the stuff that people with cancer go through. Uh, radiation, you know, chemo, and all these things, and um, you know, had a long journey with the Lord. You know, all my life, I really thought uh, I, I knew who Jesus was, but yeah. you know, until I got struck in with cancer. How long I, was that battle? The battle about a year and a half, two years. Oh wow! Yeah, long one. yeah, like total, like from beginning to complete healing. Yeah, was about two years, and I've been okay. I've been cancer free for about almost nine years now. God bless. Yeah, thank you. So it's been a, a blessing and. You know, um, after going through it all, I, I'm just going to cut the story real short. I remember a time where I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I, you know, there's got to be more to life than just this. Like, yeah. you get sick, you're healed, and then you just continue your regular life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. You know, back to, then when I, whenever I need the Lord, I'll call upon him again. Yeah. You know, it's, it's got to be more to it than that. Sure. So um, I told the Lord, I'm at your service. Uh, you know, thank you for healing me and bring me through this experience and uh, all these sufferings I went through and um, I'm at your service. Now, you know, little did I know what he wanted wanted from me. So, you know, sometimes we have to be careful what we ask from <laughs> the right, Lord yeah. because sure, if he offer, grants right. it to you yeah, and yeah. you don't, you're not ready for it, you're, you're in for a big surprise. Uh -huh. So um, after I got healed for about, you know, months, the Lord kept just banging on my soul and saying, Jeff, you need to go to the seminary. You need to go to the seminary, you know just these like profound words like mm -hmm. and um honestly i kept telling him no even though i told him i i do what he want but yeah i wasn't ready for this sure and where, where were you at your at that point in your life so like, i was 40 43 years old okay working 50 hours a week i got two kids or oh, at a grocery at a grocery store I'm, okay. a, I'm a meat cutter by trade okay and um i have two, two kids, kids uh one in college one in high school oh wow lord i can't go back to school i haven't been in school in 25 years <laughs> right you know it's just not feasible uh-huh so for six months he's knocking on my my soul you know mm -hmm. and uh one day my the, my wife came up to me and she's like What's wrong with you, man? You're miserable. You know how sure. wives are, right? Or they look at you right away and they know so, something's wrong. I didn't tell her what was going on. I'm like, I'm, this is what the Lord is asking from me. And her words out of her mouth were, how long can you say no to Jesus? Yeah. I, I, you know, I don't want to say she's right, but <laughs> she was right, right? right? right. Yeah. Two days I prayed about it. Third day I went to the seminary, picked up some papers, signed up. 2013 I entered and I graduated five years later with a degree in theology and working on my master's and I tell you Anthony it's been the best it was been the best decision I've ever made <laughs> beside my marriage right it was the best decision I've ever made you know and sometimes the Lord calls us for things mm -hmm. but you know it, it when the Lord calls you for discipleship it disrupts your life mm-hmm and a lot of times we're afraid to answer the calling sure, right, because right. we, hey, I'm, I'm good. I yeah. go to work, come home, I go to the gym, mm -hmm. you know, hang out with my friends at night, maybe go to the Nadi once a week. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Lord, my life is good. Yeah. Leave me alone. Please, yeah. So sometimes we're afraid to answer the call to discipleship. Right. You know? So where were you spiritually before you got sick? I thought I was a disciple of Christ. Well, so so tell, weekly tell, church, going okay. to church every week. Yep. You know, maybe Bible study here and there, maybe some prayers once in a while. Okay. I thought I was a great Catholic. Yeah. But I really, I, I really, once this happened to me, I really, the Lord, really showed Himself to me, like, really, what Christianity, mm -hmm. what Catholicism, 
what being a true disciple is about. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that that's going to happen to everybody, right. but for me, that was my calling at the time. So do you think people need to 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 have some adversity in their life to, to find Jesus? or You know, Anthony, um, by virtue of our baptism, mm -hmm. and Jesus tells us in Matthew 28, 16, he tells his disciples, which he's talking to all of us, but he says, go out, right, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them all I have commanded you. That message is for all of us. All of us as baptized Christians have the responsibility to go out and preach the gospel and to preach the news of Jesus Christ and the truth and teachings of the Catholic Church. Um, but we're afraid to. You know, we're afraid to do that because the world is opposing Christianity, not just the Catholic push, Church. Yeah, you're right. Christianity in general mm -hmm. right. is the world is saying something different yeah. than what Christianity is saying, gotcha. and we're afraid to go out there. A lot of us are afraid to go out there. Well, I don't know what to say. I don't have a theology degree. Mm -hmm. I don't have the right answers, but none of that is necessary. Right. Right. You don't need a theology degree to go out there and preach the gospel, the good news. Mm -hmm. You know, and gospel means good news. That's really what the definition of gospel means yeah. it's good news um what is the good news of jesus christ he came to save us he wants all of us to be in eternal glory with him mm -hmm. um but we're opposed to that the world there you know let, let's face it Anthony, sin is fun <laughs> people that abide in sin they're having a good time yeah right why are they having a good time because they really don't they don't realize actually what a better time it is mm -hmm. to abide in Jesus Christ right. than it is in sin. Because sin is temporary, mm -hmm. and sin can lead us to destruction. But Jesus Christ is eternal, right? Sure. And once you turn to Christ, <clears throat> your life changes. You're peaceful inside. You're happy inside. You know, you just have that, that glow about you. You can tell this person's a Christian. Yeah. This person loves sure. Jesus Christ. You can tell by people. There are people of Christ and people that are not. You know? Why? Why is it? Why has it changed over, over the course of the years? Why is Why is the message so much different, or the view of Christianity so much different than it was back then? That's a good question, um, Junior. And and over the years, especially this last man, this last ten, fifteen years, mm -hmm. things have really changed. Sure. Um, and, and we can get into all kind of topics, same-sex attraction and, and abortion and, and, you know, drug use and all these things. And mm -hmm. the world is saying that, listen, it's okay, right? So the world is pulling us away from the gospel because it's attracting us to these things, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Listen, uh, somebody that's attracted to same-sex attraction, love is love. Right. Right? They, I mean, they can tell you that from their perspective, sure. sure, love is love, right? Yep. And and the church and does not, they, there's this stereotype that say that the church hates gay people. Or the, the church loves everybody. Sure. God loves everyone. Sure. The church doesn't, God doesn't love the sin. Right. There's a big difference, right? right. I mean, we're all sinners. Sure. I, I can't go, I can't judge somebody with same-sex attraction yeah. just because him and I sin differently or, you know, her and I sin differently. Right. So, we all have sin, right? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. God still loves us. Yep. It's the sin that he doesn't like. So sure. I, I think that's a big stereotype. And, and and we do have people in the church that come off, you know, as hatred, but mm -hmm. that's not... The core, the core of the church does not teach that. Sure, and, and, you know? and from what I've understood is because at the end of the day, from same sex to heterosexual, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, same sex to heterosexuals, mm -hmm. the um, there 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 is no difference at that point in time until the sexual intercourse happens, and then we're both sinning, heterosexuals and both the same sex. Well, are, the heterosexual is sinning if it's outside, outside of marriage. marriage. Right. 100%. Which, which you can never get to marry pre this side. Pre -marital. Right. Yeah, premarital. Yeah, premarital. Yeah. So, what I'm so you're exactly right. So, uh, so the 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 sin is premarital sex. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Not not uh, the couple. N yeah. So the couple technically, I mean, they're not made to fit in a one union yep. to be together, right? Sure. Um, and and so yes, it is a sin, and and just like heterosexual couples are called to chastity, same sex couples 
are also called to chastity. This, there's nothing wrong with being attracted to a same-sex person. It's the act sure. that the church says is sinful. Sure, you know? sure, um, definitely. So, yeah. You know, I, I want to touch on, um, real quick, uh, so we understand, what is ECRC and where did ECRC come from? Yeah, great. So ECRC is our, it's called, it's part of the St. Thomas Diocese, mm -hmm. right? We work under the diocese. Mm -hmm. And it's called Eastern Catholic Reevangelization Center. Mm -hmm. It's located on 15 and in Inkster. Sure. And it started, I think, almost 18 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just a little small old Protestant church <laughs> and we bought it. And... Um, Lay people run it, lay people, you know, like us that are not priests or nuns, just regular people like mm -hmm. us run it. And um, it's grown to, it's just amazingly what, what it's grown into. Yeah. Um, we run so there's probably, no priest there? Um, there is a, there is, um, every day we have daily mass uh -huh. and like a different priest from a church will come oh, and do wow. mass. Oh. Tuesdays it's the bishop, Mondays might be Father Pierre. Um, you know, Wednesday, okay, Thursday, Friday, it's what, always what something are, different. What time do these go on? Uh, mass is at... Uh, I should know this. I think Mass is at 8 o'clock right? in the morning yeah. every day, yep. um, except Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have Bible studies. Uh, Bishop Francis does a Bible study on Tuesdays. I do a Bible study on Thursdays. Uh, we have probably 20 retreats throughout the year. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, Steubenville conferences, Awake My Soul, Genesis Men's Group, Women's Group. I mean, so much what, going on there. Bible study? Like what, so what goes down in the Bible? Yeah, stuff. so if I can tell you, like in my class, I have I'm teaching a class called the Road to the Cross. Okay. Mm -hmm. What led Jesus to the cross? Um, how did he get there? What happened? Why did he go to the cross? Sure. So the three months that I teach, that's my course. I go into Scripture, and teach people about why Jesus went to the cross. Mm -hmm. Bishop Francis does one on Tuesday. He takes, for example, a certain book in the Bible. Uh, maybe from the Old Testament or from the New, yep. and he'll kind of go through chapter by chapter wow. and do that. And it's great. Um, it's nice to hear from our, nice to see our bishop yeah. out there um, interacting with people. People like to see that, you know, yep. so. And when did you join ECRC? Uh, I've been involved, I've been active with them for maybe six, seven years, but heavily mm -hmm. in the past three years. Okay. Um, and they, why? Was it like, why? Why did you get to them? You know, I, I just feel that ECRC, is, it's a place to evangelize. Like, mm -hmm. we can go to all of our churches, we can go out to the diocese, rather than... Um, I belong to St. Joseph Catholic yeah. Church, Kelly and Church mm -hmm. in Troy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you evangelize from a church, you only get people that go to that church. Right. When you evangelize from ECRC, you're able to draw people from all parishes because that's really what ECRC is all about. Sure. So, And, and they, they have a, a production company called Martoma. They do a lot of videos. We're now starting a podcast our first podcast was with Sean A.R. Mm -hmm. um, called The Right, uh, I think it's called The Right, The Catholic Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just started one called Genesis, our Genesis podcast. Sure. Um, we just did the first one last week that's a, ready to launch. So okay. they're doing so a lot of great work the there. Some of the topics on your on the Genesis. Um, so we just did one. The first one was about the Eucharist. Okay. Um, there's actually, we did a, a, there was a study done on uh, the Eucharist that only 33, now this is very shocking, this is why we're doing stuff like this, 33% of Catholics believe that the Eucharist is the actual body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. The rest say it's a symbol. And that's not what we believe. So you're, you, the question you had is, what got us here? Yeah. What got us there? Yeah. That you don't believe you're receiving the Eucharist. Sure. You go up there, the priest says, this is the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe that's the body of Christ, I wouldn't receive it. Can you explain it, though, why, would, why people should believe that that's the body of Christ? Sure. So in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the three, we call them the three synoptic gospels, mm -hmm. right? The church believes. And also Jesus specifically says at the Last Supper, this was the last supper that he had before he went to the cross. Mm -hmm. This is my body. This is my blood, which I leave for you, right? Do this in memory of me. If we go to the Gospel of John in chapter 6, Jesus says seven times in a row, you must eat my body and drink my blood to have eternal life, mm -hmm. right? You must, you, you, and then he says, you must do this. You abide in me and I in you. So he repeats this seven times that this is my body. 
This is my blood. There's no sure. symbolic there. Um, it's very literal the way he speaks. And we know even from the early church that the first uh, in the first century, even from the letters of St. Paul, um, he says that there's the breaking of the bread. Mm -hmm. They were doing like little small masses in people's houses because yep. there was no church. And they would break bread, they would read the word of God, and they would continue on throughout the week. So the Eucharist, we can trace it back to the first century, that this and it contains his body, blood, soul, and divinity. So to answer your question, we did the podcast. So now the Genesis podcast is going to be stuff that's coming up like weekly in the news about mm -hmm. the faith, stuff cool. like this, um, you know, and we're kind of geared towards men. Um, and we think that men Why need is that this so challenge. Why is that so important to gear it towards men? So we started Genesis 4 9 four years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, honestly, Anthony, um, the devil's attacking men. If the devil can attack men and break the family apart, mm -hmm. he's succeeding at his job. Sure. And we can see that's what he's doing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Men are falling apart. Um, you, you see more and more men addicted to pornography, strip clubs, drugs, um, all these things that, again, the world says do it, which right. is actually the devil saying do it, paying less, paying less, a time, le less time mm -hmm. and focusing on his family, right? Yep. If I don't lead my wife and children to Jesus Christ, who's going to do it? Mm -hmm. sure. if, I, if, if I don't teach my son... He, well, my son's 28 now. Sure. But as he was growing up, you know, we're seeing a lot of younger, especially Chaldeans, if you don't show them who Jesus Christ is, right. don't expect them to learn who Jesus is outside of your house because they're going to get a whole different perspective of who Jesus is. So we're, we're taking men, especially, you know, Chaldean men. You know, we're hard workers. We provide. Um, you know, we, we're so diverse in many things. Right. And a lot of us Chaldean men believe that's what it is to be a man, is to provide. Mm -hmm. But it's not. that's not what it is to be a man. If I provide and my family has not been led to Jesus Christ, I have failed as a man. I have failed as a Catholic man in teaching my family and children who Jesus Christ is. So the, the, the men's group that we have is just so important that, listen, we're all battling the same stuff. If we sit down long enough, the three of us, we have the same sins as men, yeah. right? Yeah. And then wh wh why, do, why, do, why should we battle them individually? Why not battle them as men, right? Yep. I have friends of mine that, Jeff, they call me 12 o'clock at night. I'm struggling with this. Let's talk it out. Maybe, you know. So this is why we need brotherhood. This is why we need manhood. This is why we need fellowship. Sure. And this is one of the reasons why we created Genesis 4-9. And you say, so is it a, is it a club? <clears throat> is it a... Is it a weekly meeting is it a monthly meeting bi-monthly you said i think yes so um so what we do is uh, bi-monthly we we get together mm -hmm. at usually a mother of god church or sometimes saint joseph we usually have a speaker mm -hmm. um and uh we have uh we'll have food we'll have some beer we'll have some drinks you know and uh we have fellowship afterwards we'll have a talk and then we'll sometimes break off into small groups and the guys will talk about it. it's very fruitful and then um the other the other months the uh, the even months we have a social night. The past couple of times, we've done it at uh, um, Smokey's Beast, some Smokey's Bar and Grill in Royal Oak. Mm -hmm. All the guys, will, you know, no speaker. We get together. We have a cigar. We have a couple of drinks. Sure. Appetizers are there, and it's just a great way for us to talk about Christ, talk about Jesus, and talk about you know like brotherhood. Like you know, um, it's amazing how many, how much we have in common, especially when it comes to sin. Yes. Hey guys, I'm addicted to porn. How do I battle this? How do I stop? Mm -hmm. You know, there's a couple guys there that were addicted for years. How did they stop? They'll help other guys out. And the nice thing about it is there's no shame because mm -hmm. we're all guys. Yeah, yeah, right? It's not like we, yeah, we're, you know, we have our wives or <laughs> girlfriends or this, you know, so well, yeah. it's easier for us to talk to each other. So through. who funds the speaker? Who funds the food? Who funds all that stuff? Um, you know what, uh, Anthony, that is so funny because the guys that come, just they love the group so much. They don't eat. No shit. It, it's all through it's donations. Okay. It's a, it's nice. amazing. Yeah, it really is. All I, working together. I can't even tell you. Like you know, I'll I'll just leave a 
a little box there, guys. You know, throw what you want. I, I can't even tell you at the end of the night. You know how Chaldean guys are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's full. Yeah. It pays for the food, uh, for the speakers. Um, you know, anything, any function that we have. Um, you know, Chaldean guys are very generous, man. Yeah, that's nice. When it comes to stuff like that. So you mentioned earlier, you said um, evan evangelical and evangelist, right? Um, define that so people know what somebody who performs that or is an evangelist. An evangelist, yes. yeah. Um, so an evangelist is someone that goes out there and preaches the gospel. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you'll think that you say, well, I'm going to go preach it to maybe to Muslims or maybe to um, Buddhas or maybe to Jehovah's, right? And that's fine. But I'll be honest with you, Junior, um, you know who needs evangelizing? Catholics. Your own family. <laughs> yeah. Catholics. Yeah. Catholics don't know the truths of the yeah. church. I'm one of them. Our, our, our be own, honest, be and believe me, you'll get opposed by your own family mm -hmm. before you get opposed by outside people. Right. Sure. So evangelization starts in your home, right? Yep. And and then it's, you go out there. I'm telling you, I. But look, our Bible studies are, are, are full of Catholics because mm -hmm. they don't know the Bible. Right. right. Yeah. They don't know the Bible. And we're notorious for not knowing the Bible, <laughs> especially when the Bible came from the Catholic Church. That's crazy. Right. You know? Me, personally, from grade school through high school, I went to Catholic school, Catholic schools. I think How much you know the Bible? I don't. Yeah. That's the thing. And I did know all the New Testament because you'd have to study for tests at sure. that time mm -hmm. and stuff through school. But to know it, to understand it, I've never really, I never thoroughly dug deep into it to yeah. know it. You know what I'm saying? So. And see, this is what happens when we're saying, well, why is the, de where is the decline? Where is the, why come people are not evangelizing? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people like you yep. that can't evangelize because they don't know scripture. Sure. Right. They don't know the message of Jesus Christ. So you're like, well. How can I evangelize mm -hmm. if I don't know the message of the gospel? Yeah, so what's the answer to that? The answer is start small, right? I always tell people, pick up a Bible, pick up the catechism of the Catholic Church that teaches the teachings of the church, yep. and you don't start small. I mean, you know, read a, a, a couple chapters, uh, find out what the church teaches about confession. Familiar, familiar yourself with one certain topic, mm -hmm. and then when, when you're going out and you're talking to people, you're going to talk to them about the topic that you know. Right. Right? Yep. I'm not going to go out and evangelize to people about something I don't know. Sure. So I'm going to study a little bit at a time. Um, it's not, people think it's so hard, but it's not. The Holy Spirit just will give you that gift if you truly want to evangelize. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit will give you that gift in, in, in learning how to interpret the Bible and what the message of the gospel really is. So six years you've been into ECRC, about six years you said, yes, right? Yes, roughly five, five six, six years, years. yeah. What, what, where has your growth been and where is, where is going to be the continued education coming from Jeff Kassab when it comes to that? Like, yeah. Where do you see yourself growing in this in this field? Well, honestly, um, social media has really taken off with ECRC. Um, again, the first two podcasts have just started, mm -hmm. and we feel that because podcast is the way to go, yep. people want to sit in their car and, mm -hmm. and instead of listening to garbage, let's okay. listen to something you know something sure. that we can learn from. Um, and uh, they have a Martoma production that's uh, we're working on a class. We're working on a, a video called "The Journey to Heaven." Mm -hmm. Um, that will be, and then uh, like uh, Cardam does a lot of classes, and so the growth is the growth is um, I think in social media coming up, you know, but throughout the year, ECRC and even me the past three years, mm -hmm. every semester um, we do some type of either a catechism and apologetics class, yep. um, a Bible study, uh, something where we can get people, you know, uh, just to learn more about their faith, mm -hmm. right? Because, listen, if we, this new generation growing up, if, they don't, if we don't teach them about the faith, actually, the new young generation is f filled with the Spirit. Like, you see a church We've heard that all from filled a lot with of, young people. We've heard that from a lot, a lot yeah. of different Yes, I think it's guys people. my age, your age, yeah. that you said you grew up in a Catholic church. After that, I lost it. you lost it. Yeah. Yeah. These are the people we need to focus on. I think it's ages 30 to 50, this yeah. age group, they really need to focus on them and how do we get them back into the church and back into the faith so how to do, evangelize. How do you recruit them? How do you expect them to be at, yeah. you know, at, at your doorstep working with you? It's a million dollar question. Hmm. We ask ourselves that question 
every day. We can only plant the seed. Sure. Only God, only Jesus can bring them back to the faith, right? Sure. But we can help. Uh, I, I'll tell you a real quick story. I, I was uh, a few years ago. I was working at the store. I had my my cross was just hanging out by accident. It usually it's in. Yep. Oh, this was in Detroit. Lady comes up to me, taps me on the shoulder. She says to me, "Excuse me." I'm like, I turn around. I'm like, "Yeah." She's like, "That cross offends me." Just like that out of the blue. I, in response, I said to her, one day this cross will save you. Oh, man, she stormed out of the store. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, man, she's, she was pissed. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what this is going to, yeah. what this is going to cause. Right. I didn't think nothing of it, right? And the, even the response <laughs> I gave was something that just like the Holy Spirit prompted Pro me yeah, right. to Jeff say yeah. this. Yeah. Next day, I was in the back of the store, you know, putting up some stuff and, Somebody taps me on the shoulder. I turn around. She goes, do you remember me? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, you're the lady that came in yesterday and yeah. said, my cross offends you. Yeah. You know what she told me? Mm. Can you tell me how it will save me? Yeah. That's evangelization. I didn't Imagine do anything. <laughs> she went home. She, she, thought she thought about this all night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit prompted her to go back and find out how the cross can save her. None well, of my she's, doing. Hey, she's, All uh, she, she saw she, was the cross. She's lucky she came back to you and not back to me, because I wouldn't have had an answer for her. Right? <laughs> at right. least you did. Yeah. <laughs> we, we got together at a coffee shop. We sat down for like a week. We talked. Oh, wow. Her background was, she was not an atheist, but she didn't know who God was. Yeah. For her growing up, God was like Santa Claus, something yeah. imaginary. When she got older, sure. didn't believe in it. Yeah. You know? Then, so we got together for a week, and honestly, she was really enthused, and I don't know if she joined a church or what, but... I didn't do anything. Just plant the seed. Christ does the rest. Did you ever ask her why she said that? Why that the cross offended her? I did. I never asked her. I, I really didn't. But something had to have happened in her life. You're exactly yeah. for her to say mm -hmm. that offends me. Right, right. But I didn't want to get into that conversation. I figured she's here. Yep. Let's, let's talk forward. about Christ, yeah. or let's talk about Christianity, mm -hmm. yeah. and see where we go from here. Well, so another thing too, like in comparison to Anthony and I versus you as well, you have a theology degree, mm -hmm. right? And um, it looks like you had got it from Sacred Heart. Yes, yeah, Sacred Heart Seminary. Sacred Heart Seminary. So that gives you the ability to. Put yourself in that position to answer in a more, well, I'd say, respectful way where almost somebody like me who doesn't have that, I'd be offended, yeah. right? Yes. That's the first thing I would take offense to it and say, okay, you're testing my my God and my, yeah. my, my Jesus. Yeah, right? yeah. So, so, you know, I commend you for being able to do that, right? Yeah. Um, how, how, how do others follow in that footstep that don't have your degree? Yeah. My answer did not come from a degree. Sure. My answer came out of love. Okay. Right? Yep. We have to know how to engage people. Mm -hmm. And I've learned this over the years through Facebook. You know how Facebook is. And even through evangelizing and doing apologetics. Mm -hmm. If I don't evangelize with love, I'm going to turn more people away from Christ than bring them to Christ. Right. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah, good we, we had a We had a lot. We, have a, we had a discussion before this show started with Anthony. If I if, if if Anthony's not familiar with something, mm -hmm. and I'm speaking to him like, you, you know, you don't know this. Yes. Are, are you with all due respect? Are, yeah, are you yeah, that dumb? Yeah. You don't know this. He's gonna get more discouraged and like, see, sure. these are this is what followers of Christ are like. Yeah. And people turn away from that. You got to talk with love. You got to show love, and that's what Jesus said. Jesus told his disciples. The only way people will know you're my disciples mm -hmm. is how much you love one another, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If I don't show you guys, if I don't show my brother's love, you're never going to say that guy's got a degree. You might say he's got a degree, but he's not a follower of Christ, mm -hmm. you know? And there's many Catholics and Christians that way that are just bitter. And listen, this is how it is, and that's it. When Anthony asked me a question about a certain thing about the faith, I can't, and I told you, I said, it's not just because... Right. I can't tell you something just because the church says so. Mm -hmm. That's not a reason to believe. Yeah, exactly. if, if, I, if, if I tell you that you have to believe in this because the church says so, mm -hmm. I wouldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. I have to back it up, yeah. Yeah. right? Either theologically or through scripture or through our church fathers. It has to be backed up. You know? sure. So theology means? Study of God. Theory, right? No, it means the study of God. 
Okay, so yeah. we're, so so you're studying God and and how is that? How does that like? Yeah. Sh- <laughs> how does it how does it come out to like you knowing everything now? Yeah. So um, the study of God comes through revelation, right? God has God has revealed Himself to us mm-hmm. through Scripture. Sure. Right. Okay. Reveal in the Old Testament, He reveals Himself to us. Um, you know, through Abraham, through Isaac, through the prophets, through Moses. And then in the New Testament, obviously, he reveals himself to us through Jesus Christ, his only son, yeah. you know, right? Which is God also, part of the Trinitarian Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So we, we, we will never know anything about God unless he has revealed it to us. Um, you can come to some conclusion about God, maybe through nature and through science. Mm-hmm. You might be able to say, well, you know, okay, there has to be another being um, that, that's created all these things. But without getting to know him on a personal level, yep. and that's what scripture is, you get to know God. See, people separate God. They think he's just so high and so um, far out there that we can't have a relationship with him. With him. And then he would never reveal himself to us. But on the contrary, he loves us so much. Somebody that loves you a lot, how, how does he? How does? How do you love somebody by having a relationship with them, right? Right. Yep. And that's how we, that's how it is with Jesus Christ or with God. We have a relationship with him. Mm-hmm. He was able to through Scripture know how much he loved us, that he died for us, mm-hmm. and um, that's how you get to know about God. And of course, throughout the years, we've had a lot more. Fathers of the church, Thomas Aquinas and, and Augustine and all these early church fathers, yep. they were a lot smarter than we are today. Sure. And we're able to, um, uh, to to seek out things in scripture and bring it to life. So we're able to, to learn more about who God is. Now, do we know fully the truths about God? Nobody does. Not until we meet him. We won't know that till we get into heaven, right? Yep. How can you fully understand Father, Son, Holy Spirit one God in three persons. Mm-hmm. How does that work? Yeah. Sure. But our faith tells us it's true through scripture, but fully, fully believe it. Like you, when you get in heaven, you'd be like, wow, yeah. now I get it. Yep. You know? So these are things that our faith is a big part of what we believe. Nice. You know? So you talk about scriptures and you talk about the Bible and you talk about everything that's been documented, right? Mm-hmm. What are you doing, if anything, to document your memoirs or your learnings or your teachings? Uh, well, I mean, through my, like my own personal stuff, I mean, you know. Um, so you said you had a blog. I have a blog called okay. The Journey to Heaven, okay. right, journeytoheaven.com, where I post uh, my right articles, at least try to do it once a month, mm-hmm. maybe twice a month. And... Um, I have a YouTube page okay. where I put up, a, I'm, I'm doing a series called Bible in the Backyard. So one day I was sitting in the backyard, I was reading scripture. Uh-huh. I said to myself, you know what? Let Roll me just pop up my iPhone. I put it on a, I brought a bunch of two by fours. Yeah. I propped up the camera and I let me start awesome. recording. So it turned into <laughs> nine episodes now. It's called, they're only like 10 minutes. Oh, good. I go through scripture. I just give you like enough info where I wanted people to. Seek scripture. Yep. Oh, man, this is interesting what Jeff said. Let me go grab the Bible and see if I can learn more. So, so I have a series. Nine episodes over how long? Um, I, I, did, I started in September. Oh, you started that. Yeah, I started oh, in last great. September. And then I was doing them all in the backyard. Mm-hmm. But then it got a little cold. Yeah. So I have a sunroom. So this next one, I'm going to do it in my sunroom, sure. which is facing the backyard. Okay. Um, so hopefully I'll, I'm going to start back up again. And they're great. And I have a few other YouTube videos where I speak. Uh, like I, I'll speak at um, a lot of uh, either at a conference or I'll give lectures. Mm-hmm. I record them. I put them up on YouTube. Um, I was just in Australia. Father Matthew called me there for um, a youth conference mm-hmm. and gave a few lectures there. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is how we're, you know, um, if me personally, awesome. spreading the good news and good spreading the gospel of Jesus that Christ, awesome. you know, and trying to bring other people and other men to Jesus Christ. So ultimately, we have you ever written heaven. for the Chaldean News? So I, I wrote for the Chaldean News. Yes, I have many articles in there. Okay. And then um, I haven't written anything since it was um, sold. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I, I was doing... Is there a reason doing, for that? Um, I, I don't know. No, I'm not sure. I, I, 
I, I reached out to them um, okay. to, to do some more writing. <coughs> Haven't heard nothing back from them yet, but I would love to. They change editors here and there. Yes, so, yeah. So I used to write, I like I would write one month and Cutham would write one month. Mm-hmm. And then we would call it the ECRC Corner. Okay. So we'd write, and we did just different stuff. Um, it, they were great. I think I wrote about it, seven or eight articles for them. But um, I'd love to, you know, do more work with them whenever okay. they're ready <coughs> to do that. All right, cool. Yeah. So before we take off, is there anything that we want to let the viewers know that we may have missed on this today, or, or you think you covered as much as you can? You know, Junior, the the message I want to leave to everybody is that um, discipleship is very important to be a disciple of Christ and to bring other people to Jesus Christ. Yep. Jesus Christ had twelve apostles. Mm-hmm. At his death, when he was on the cross. Ten of them left him. They were nowhere to be found. One betrayed him. That was Judas. And one stayed with him at the foot of the cross. That was John. Who are we out of those 12? Mm. Are you the ten that left? Are you the one that betrayed him? Or are you the one that stays with him? Ask yourself that question. You know, which apostle are you? For me, I want to be the one that stayed with him at the cross and bring as many people as I can to the cross. Not because the cross is about suffering, but the, cro- uh, the cross is about glory. Mm-hmm. It's about, is about eternal glory. Yep. Every day we should ask ourselves this question. If I was to die today, am I going to go to heaven or not? Jesus, at the end of your life, Jesus will say two things to you. Well done, my beloved son. Come with me to eternal glory. Or depart from me, you evildoer. I do not know who you are. It's only two things you'll hear at the end. So hopefully we don't want to hear this because yeah. that no. decision is eternal. Yep. Right. And we don't because we're human, yes. we don't know what eternal is. Sure. Yeah. It's not a thousand years, a million years. It's for eternity. Mm-hmm. The decisions we make here. So let's be disciples of Christ and bring as many people as we can to him. Amen. So we close out every show with a a question. The question is, what does it mean to you to be Chaldean? Oh, man. Being Chaldean is, for me, I associate it with Catholicism. Okay. My faith, you know, like... You know, like it's the nice thing about um, uh, Chaldeans is you're born into... Catholicism, Catholicism sure. yeah. you know, it's like you, you don't have a choice, mm-hmm. you know, obviously when you get older, you have the choice, but sure. most of us, we're just born into it, man. Yeah. I, I love it how Chaldeans are so faithful. You walk into their house, statues and rosaries and pictures, and mm-hmm. and it's amazing. And, and I think we're lucky and blessed to be Chaldean oh. and that we grew up in the one true faith. Yep. which is Catholicism. A lot of people are not that lucky. Yeah. And for me, that's what, for me, when I ask, when I, someone says Chaldean, I don't even ask them if you're Catholic. Yeah, it's don't, a given. You don't have to. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, I'm Catholic, you yep. know? Yeah. So yep. that's what I love about being, Beautiful. Ca- being Chaldean. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, cool. Well, it was awesome great. having you. Yeah, Thank you so much great. for having me. We hope to see the more more in the future of your, uh, your, your we'll say, your preaching and your assistance to the Catholic faith. And Thank you so much. So, cool. Before we go off, we're letting you guys know, make sure you guys subscribe, hit the link, hit the like button down at the bottom on our YouTube channel, and make sure you uh, check this interview out along with many others on our YouTube page, social media that we've got, also on any type of uh, outlet like Spotify, iTunes, and any other podcast that you want to listen to. Anything, anything else you want to know about our program or time availabilities, if you're looking to get on our show, look up KUWT chaldeans.com and that gives you the opportunity to come on the show and be able to present yourself like jeff has done today and others in the past so looking forward to our next episode we'll check you out signing off myself anthony coma jeff kasap we'll see you guys on the next episode thanks again